Hey, welcome back to the next video in the SAS course. We're going to learn about SAS mix-ins. All right, folks, the SAS mix-in is basically uh, like, I like to think of it as a function for CSS. They behave pretty similar to functions in, say, jQuery or PHP or something like that. It allows you to do some really cool stuff in SAS. It lets you take long, repetitive pieces of code, things like vendor prefixes in CSS3, where you have border radiuses and box shadows and gradients, where there's a lot of different lines of code you need to write. Um, but what you could do is you could package that up in a mix-in and then recycle that code throughout the rest of your, your style sheet and call that code globally so you don't have to rewrite those say you know six seven or eight or ten or twelve lines of code over and over again now another really cool thing about mix-ins is that you can pass in custom values to make those mix-ins a lot more robust and powerful you know if you wanted to add uh, additional measurements or different variables that you wanted to to customize and modify that mix-in and i'll show you what i'm talking about right here so what I've done is I've created a new folder on my desktop called mixins, and never mind the little C dash prefix there. That's just because uh, in your course files, your final course files, you can actually take this folder out uh, and reference it or use it verbatim, whatever you want to do. This is what I'm using uh, straight from the course files. So you can rename that to just mixins, or you can create a folder called mixins, whatever you want. And so I have that folder, mixins folder added to my code editor right here, Adam. The structure is the same as what we've been using thus far, where we have our SAS folder, our CSS folder, the plugins, base layouts, modules. I also have the variables SAS partial that we just added in our previous uh, lesson. And I've went ahead and I've taken the liberty to create an index file with some basic uh, markup in there because I want to work with just a little basic layout. And here's a preview of what you're going to see. It's very, very simple. This is if you've taken the course files and you're using them. If not, you might want to pause the video and copy this, but I recommend just, just pulling out that course file folder uh, called mixins and kind of going from there. So what I've done is I've just added some basic styles in here, you know, in the base, I've added a common SAS folder. I just have some body styles. I have the variables here. I'm also using uh, a container SAS file to, to style up the container. And I have not yet styled the boxes because I want to do that with you using mixins. And so what we're going to do is we're going to style those four boxes, these divs here. We're just going to make them circles. They're going to have a border radius. They're going to have a box shadow and let's give them, uh, let's give them a gradient. So let's use three specific CSS three styles that typically require vendor prefixes. That's WebKit, Moz, O, M, S. And it really adds to the C it really adds a lot of lines of code to the CSS. And so I want to show you why mixins are so powerful. So here in our mixins folder, what I want to do is create a new module SAS file. And I'm going to call it, uh, it's, it's a partial, remember that. And I'm going to call it box.sass. So we have a box.sass partial. Now before we start doing anything, we're going to have to go to our modules directory and we're going to import our module styles here. So I'm going to import box. So that's going to pull in the styles from the box.sass partial. And here is our box. I'm just going to call it box. And we're going to style those boxes. So let's start off by just saying box and we're going to indent in one space there. And let's start off by just showing them up in our HTML here. I want to be able to see them appear on the screen. So let's say uh, height, we're going to go 100 pixels, width 100 pixels. And let's say background is going to be, let's say this color right here, 036. And let's see what that looks like. I'm going to save that. Let's see what it looks like in our preview here. Okay, so that's not going to work because I forgot to turn on my compiler. You should do the same. So uh, I'm going to CD into my desktop there. Now, if you're using CodeKit, all you got to do is drag the mixins folder as your project. If you're using Koala, do the same thing. I'm just going to be using uh, command line for a little while here. 
and I'm gonna look for the C-mixins folder. Great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell SAS to watch the SAS folder and output to the CSS folder. Because we're using partials, I don't have to be afraid of them all compiling to separate individual CSS files. This is going to remedy that because I'm using partials, I hope. But it looks good. We have one CSS file here, app.css. Everything looks good. There is our vanilla CSS. So now our box should show up here. Okay, they do show up here, uh, but it looks like one long line that's only because it's only because they're all the same color and they're all stacking because they're display block. And let's just do display inline block. And that should make them side by side. You'll see them here side by side. That looks wonderful. Great. So we have our box style. So now what if we wanted to uh, you know, add a border radius? Well, we could just simply say border radius and 100%, that makes it just a full circle. But the problem here with this style is that typically it requires what's called vendor prefixing. And that means in certain browsers, you can check uh, a really great great way of checking is using a website called can I use, can I use .com, and type in the CSS rule that you're looking, the CSS3 rule, so I'm gonna say border radius and then it's going to say rounded corners and it shows you all of the different browsers that accept just border radius. So you can see pretty much everything except just border radius uh, looks like 92.7% um, require it to be unprefixed. So you don't really need to do prefixes for this one, but let's do it anyway, just because um, typically, you know, that's what you would have done in the not so distant past and just for the purposes of this example. So let's say we're gonna do it before here. WebKit border radius 100% uh, and then there was Moz border radius 100%. So something like this. Oh, Moz, not Mox. So we have three vendor brief prefixes there. And now what if we wanted to add a box shadow? So box shadow would just be box dash shadow and uh, we'd say zero, zero, 10 pixels. So this is like the X, Y, and then the distance, I think. And let's say just black. So you'll see a box shadow there. Let's push that box shadow down like uh, five pixels and make it um, five, five, five. So it's a little bit more subtle there. So you can see that, but let's say we added our vendor prefixes to this one as well. So WebKit box shadow, and we're gonna go zero, five pixels, 10 pixels, triple five. And you can see that this is already starting to get to be a very hefty CSS declaration here just for simple boxes. Now, can you imagine if I needed to style additional elements using these same styles, I'd have to copy everything, paste it into another rule. And then what if I change the box shadow, then I gotta find all those instances where I did that and it can get really, really messy. So we've got our box shadow and let's say we wanted to throw some gradients in there as well. So this one, I'm pretty sure you gotta really use those prefixes. So let's say we're gonna have a fallback color. We, what do we have? We have the 036, so let's move that down, down here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we gotta do background and WebKit linear gradient and then orange red. I like orange red and uh, yellow. And then I'm gonna paste that. I'm gonna paste it, I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna change the vendor prefixes to O dash linear gradient, and then we have Moz, uh, not zero, O, and then we have linear gradient. So, so all of these prefixes, this first one is a fallback for browsers that don't support gradients. Then we have Safari, Opera, Firefox, and then the standard syntax for a gradient. So now if I save this, those should mix in, and then there we go, we have our gradients just like that. But look at this rule. Now imagine if I wanted to create another element that had all of these uh, different styles. Well, what we can do is use a mix-in to save us an insane amount of time when we wanna recycle that this much code and then keep our, our uh, SAS style sheets nice and simple and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new uh, SAS file in my root directory of the SAS folder here and I'm gonna call it uh, partial, it's gonna be dash mixins.sass. So we have our mixins and our variables and then our app. And I could put mixins in maybe base or something like that, but I'm gonna keep it out into the root because it's gonna be a more of a global uh, sheet. So right here we have our mixins, global mixins. 
I'm gonna save that. We can just create a mix-in just for the box. To create a mix-in in SAS, all you have to do is open up with an equal sign and then the name of your mix-in. So I'm gonna say box. And then you have your parentheses to pass in any arguments like sizes or measurements or colors, anything you wanna pass into the mix-in itself. And I'm gonna leave it empty for now. So let's go over to our box.sass and let's copy all of this. I'm gonna cut it actually, I'm gonna cut it out, gone, over to my mix-ins and I'm gonna paste that code in there. Now to make this more dynamic, what I can do now is I could just save this and I can go back to box.sass and I can call that mix-in like this. I could say plus box. It knows it's there. I don't have any arguments to pass in, so just box. Uh, whoops. That didn't work. Uh, you can see I have an error up here. Uh, and that's because in my app.sass, I didn't call my global mixins. So I'm gonna go ahead, import global mixins, and that would be this file right here, mixins. Now it should work. There we go. So now in our app.css file, you can see Box has all those styles. Now where this really comes in handy is if I had other HTML that wanted to use these styles. So let, let's, let me show you an example here. So let's go back to our mix-ins and let's have some arguments that we can pass in to make this even more powerful. So let's say we wanted all this to be dynamic, the border radius, the box shadow color, the, and then the, the gradient colors. So this is how we would do that. In here, we're gonna start out with, let's say the radius. So this is a variable that it's going to look for, basically what it's gonna pass in the data into this parentheses. And I'll show you how this works here. So we have radius and we have our dollar sign. Uh, we're gonna say shadow. And that's just gonna be for the shadow color. So let's just say shadow color. And we have another argument that I wanna pass in here. This is gonna be grad one and grad two for gradient color one, gradient color two. So now I'm gonna pass, I can pass in four arguments, but I, to make those dynamic, I need to say, this is gonna be the radius. I'm gonna copy this. Instead of just hard coding 100%, I'm gonna say that whatever I tell these to be is what will show up here in the mixin. And then here, instead of just a hard coded color there, I'm gonna say shadow color, copy that and then paste it a few times here. And then down here, we're gonna have our grad one, so it's not a hard-coded color. And then over here, we'll have grad two in replacement of the hard-coded yellow. There we go. So now we have a very dynamic, malleable uh, mix-in. So if I say this, it's gonna break because I'm not passing in any of the arguments. So I'm gonna go back to box.sass, and now this is where I have to pass in those values. So the first value, was our radius, then shadow color, then we had our gradient one, gradient two. So the radius, I'm gonna say 100%. Shadow color, I want it to be 555. The gradient one, orange red, and gradient color two is yellow. So now if I save that, it should work. There we go. And so now check this out. In my app CSS, you can actually see, never mind those dots, they kind of got in the way there you can actually see that it passed in all the values correctly. Now where this really comes in handy, this is where I'm gonna show you the power of a mix-in, is if I go back to my HTML and I were to say, give this box the ID of box two, and this one the ID of box three, and I wanted those to be different styles, I'm gonna go back to my box.sass and I'm going to, Technically, I'd probably wanna put this into maybe a module, but I'm gonna just stay within box because I'm styling just the box. So box two, let's say I wanted it to have different values. So I'm gonna call that box mixin, and I only want it to be 50% border radius. I want the shadow to be just hard black, and I want the colors to be totally different gradients. So let's let's do something like 639, I don't know what that is, and it's like a purple, and FC3, that's like another yellow. So now if I save that, you can see here, my box two is different, and I'm maybe gonna change this from 50% to like 20 pixels, the border radius, so it's gonna be totally different shape. Cool, and now I'm gonna do one more, box three, and I'm gonna call box, and I'm gonna say the border radius is only five pixels. Box shadow, let's do something really light like DDD. 
And the top color, let's say black, whoops, black. And the bottom color, let's go for teal. If I save, you can see that that has a different uh, shape, or sorry, a different style. But this is where the magic is. If you go to app.css, look at the styles. You have box. These are all the styles for box. These are all the styles for box two. And these are all the styles for box three. So look how many styles, 57 lines of CSS for just calling in one mix in, just like that. This alone is, is like 50 lines of CSS, just like that. So that is the power of a mix in. That's how you wanna use your mix ins so that you can save a ton of time, recycle code all throughout your style sheets. And I recommend you add them into a global mix ins.sas file partial so that you can call that in and keep it out of your styles and just call the mix ins as you need them. And then once you start modifying and adding new mix ins, just add them in your global mix ins file so that you can know where to access them. So that's it for mix ins. Stay tuned, we're gonna jump into some more. SaaS features next, so I'll see you there.